My name is Matt and I am an Applications Engineer with Intercell Corporation. Today I'd like to talk to you about the Active Filter Designer, which is a part of the ISIM tool. ISIM is an interactive web-based tool that allows you to select your supporting components of your design, build your schematic, and then do online validation. It is very easy to use and best of all, it's free. Let's go ahead and take a look. To get to the Active Filter Designer, go to the Tools drop-down and select ISIM. From here, you will select the Active Filter Designer under the Operational Amplifiers tool. If you have not logged in, it will ask you to do so now. The first page you will see is the Design Requirements page. Let's take a walk through each item on the left and explain what it is. First drop down is the filter type. As of right now, we have the low pass filter and the high pass filter. The options below are slightly different for each one, so I'll go through the high pass filter first. Below the filter type is the filter order. From here, you can select a filter order from 2 to 6. The next option below will allow you to enter polls manually or use our semi-automated process. If you select enter polls manually, you will be presented with more options. You can enter your filter cutoff frequency and the desired units. And then below that, you can enter your maximum passband frequency, which is where the gain will roll off at the high end frequencies. The next option below is whether you want to input complex poles or F0 in Q values. Selecting the F0 in Q values, you can then put in your gain, cutoff frequency, and quality factor, or Q, for each stage. Increasing the order will add more stages. Same for complex poles. When selecting this, you can enter the gain and then the real and imaginary pole locations you wish to use. If you wish to use the semi-automated process, click No on Enter Poles manually. From here, you can put your filter cutoff frequency Hovering over the text will give you your parameter ranges. Note there are two values for each min, default, and max values. The ones on the left are when you're using the enter manual polls option. The ones on the right are for when you're using our semi-automated process. Your next design requirement is the maximum passband frequency. Below this is your desired pass band gain. For the high pass tool, you can have a gain of 1 all the way up to 20 volts per volt. Finally, the last option is what filter shape you would like to use. In this tool, we have the Butterworth, the Bessel, three types of Chevy Chev, an Equi Ripple, two types of Gaussian, and the Legendre Populus also known as the L filter. Selecting any one of these will update your views to the right and how the filter shape looks and will also give you text briefly describing each filter shape. Next, let's look at the low pass filter side. The only difference on the low pass side from the high pass side is that you do not need to enter a high frequency roll off. Just as before, you have the options from 2 to 6 for your filter order. You can enter your poles manually, either by inputting your F0 and Q values or your complex poles, your filter cutoff frequency input, your passband gain. Note that for the low pass filter, this is only available up to 10 volts per volt, and these same filter shapes are available. Now that the design requirements have been discussed, let's build up a circuit. For this example, I'm going to do a 6 order, gain of 5, Butterworth, low pass filter. Once you are ready, 
press the Continue button. The next page that you will see is the Setup page. At the top of the page, you will see four gray boxes. These are each stage of your low-pass filter. Since this was a sixth order low-pass filter, there are three stages. In each of these boxes, you will see the cutoff frequency, the quality, and the gain of each stage. It will also show the topology of each stage, which can either be sal and key or multiple feedback. To change the topology, come right below here and select which option you would like. This tab will also tell you what op amp is currently selected for each stage. The last tab is the load, which we will cover towards the end. Next, under the design constraints, are your total supply voltage, ranges being from 1.8 to 40 volts. Note that this is a total supply range, so if you have a plus or minus 5 volt rail, you must input 10 volts. The next constraint below is the maximum output peak-to-peak -peak voltage at the last stage output. This can be anywhere between 10% of your supply voltage or 90% of your supply voltage. Let's change this to 5. Below this is your intended linearity specification. The two options that are available are STEM and SFDR, or Spurious Free Dynamic Range. Selecting SFDR will give you the SFDR parameters. Those being the target range and the maximum expected signal frequency. The last option you have is the resistor precision. You can choose between exact 0.5%, 1%, and 2%. The section below the design constraints is the calculated parameters section. This section details different parameters for each stage, including the output peak-to-peak -peak voltage, the required input peak-to-peak -peak voltage to obtain the output peak-to-peak -peak voltage, the required max peak output peak-to-peak -peak voltage, the estimated minimum required slew rate, and the minimum designed target bandwidth. Note that the minimum slew rate and target bandwidths are guard banded targets to provide design margin under device, supply, and temperature variations. The last section at the bottom is the recommended op amps for each stage. The top device in the table generated for each stage is deemed minimally suitable and is the default part filled into the top boxes going down the list gives more design margin. Because we have changed our design constraints, the selected op amp is no longer the top part in this list. That means for this stage we must select a new part. I will select the ISL24021 at the top of the list. Let's check the rest of the stages to see if they need to change as well. For stage 2, I will select the ISL 28127. And for stage 1, I will choose the ISL 28110. One thing to note on this page, if you go all the way to the bottom, you can select between the alternative op amps that have been screened out. These parts do not satisfy one or several of the necessary design targets and or constraints. Please use these carefully. Once you have selected all of your devices, you can now add a load. At the top right, select the Load tab. The options that are available are a high impedance 10x probe, a 1k ohm to 50 ohm 10x passive probe, a doubly terminated match impedance, a single low pass pole, and a single high pass pole.
For this example, I will choose a high impedance 10x probe. Once you are complete, press the design button. The next screen you will be presented with is the design page. On the design page, you can see your full circuit design, and also at the bottom, is a chart of your selected devices and any alternative versions that are available. Alternative versions will include a single channel with disable, a dual channel, and a quad channel. From this page you can also change any component values you would like. All you need to do is click on the blue bubble and change to the value you would like to use. Once you are finished, press OK. A word of caution, making changes to individual components can severely degrade your filter performance. If you would like to make changes, your best option is to go to the left side and press the redesign tab. Using this feature, you can change individual capacitor components. The built-in algorithms will recalculate the resistor values. For instance, if I change this to 10 nanofarads, and then press Calculate. You can see below all of the resistor values have been optimized and recalculated. From this page you can also change your resistor precision. Once you are complete, press the Apply button to update your schematic components. Once you return back to the schematic page, you can then run some analysis. Coming up to the top, you have three types of analyses. There's noise, AC, and transient. Running an AC analysis will present you with multiple results. These results are broken up into the different stages. The top left is your stage one output. Top right is your stage two output. Bottom left is your stage three output. And the bottom right combines all stage outputs together. Let's check out the stage 3 output. When clicking on the image, a new web scope window will open. One nice thing to check here is how well the simulation waveforms match against the ideal waveforms. Going up to the top right, you can turn off the phase and group delay waveforms, leaving only the gain waveform and then click on the ideal gain waveform. As you can see, the simulation results match the ideal results very nicely, at least in the passband and roll-off sections. Same can be done with the phase and group delay. Once you are done looking at your results, close this window. If you need to make any changes, go back to the Redesign tab, or if you would like to run more simulations, go back to the simulation page. But if you are happy with your results, then there are two options you can take from here. The first option is to click the Download Schematic button. This will download the circuit onto your computer and allow you to open it in ISMPE. For more information on ISMPE, the offline simulation tool that complements the online tool, please see application note AN1652 in the videos available on ISIM landing page. The other option you can take is to download the design summary. Click the design summary tab. Within the design summary, it will give you your design requirements overview, your stage parameters, and the devices that were selected for each stage. It will also give you your schematic along with the component values, a bill of materials, and finally any simulation results you previously ran. To download these all to a PDF format, go up to the top and press the PDF download icon. The Active Filter Designer is a great tool that allows you to shorten your design cycle and get to production faster. To check out iSIM, please go to innersil.com forward slash iSIM and register. <laughs>